The spiked shield. It has the highest base damage of any shield in the game and nothing else to say about it. It is it is a very standard, no nonsense, no gimmicks, not even any sort of oddities type of shield. And I'm expecting this to be a totally normal survival run because of that. I guess maybe I could do something like uh, try and go after enemies that are very well countered by shields, like fighting the giant, but really how is that any different from a lot of the runs I've been doing lately? So yeah, even like builds, I don't think there's anything special I can do for this, it's just a shield that does good damage. Which is strange, in Dead Cells, not something you see a whole lot, because usually even like the most basic type of weapons have something going on with them. The Balance Blade, for example, uh, has the whole gimmick where if you continuously attack with it, you start to get criticals. Uh, even stuff like the, let's say, shovel is just, which is a weapon that is a piece of metal on a stick that you just swing very fast, has extra knockback, it uh, sh uh, will reflect back bomb projectiles. It is like one of the fastest survival weapons you can get in the game. There's a lot of different things with that. Uh, and this has nothing. It is a shield. I guess I would call it a straight upgrade to the good old wooden shield that you got at the very beginning of the game because of that, because it's so similar to how that is, where it functions as its base type and does not do anything extra. But like I said, even stuff like the bow and infinite arrows has infinite arrows and gets you a critical on the third strike. It's so strange to see just a normal good shield. I mean, it's not a bad thing either. I, I have said before, like in the giant killer, giant whistle run, that sometimes just having a normal, decent run is perfectly fine in Dead Cells. And I also say a lot that you don't always need a lot of weirdo gimmicks. Sometimes all you want is something to do some decent damage, but you'd think that there would be something. I suppose it does have a big spike on the front. That's kind of cool. You don't see that with a whole lot of other uh, reactionary type of weapons really does rely on enemies actually jumping into you to deal damage, and even then, with something being that large, you wouldn't really think it would do too much. Though we are talking about uh, characters like Rampagers and Failed Experiments, which rush at you with reckless abandon <laughs> and don't even think about what it would mean to slam themselves directly into a gigantic spike, regardless of how dull it is. I don't know, I mean, zombies are stupid. I don't think anybody's going to disagree with that. Ah, uh, well. Still, though, if you were trying to go for a shield that... Oh, come on now. So close to not getting hit there. If you're trying to go for a shield that does double extra damage, you'd probably want to go... Hmm, heal, you say? Maybe I'll hit up the, uh, the sewers. Um, you'd think you'd probably want to go for, I don't know, like, um... A lot of spikes on there. Tiny, very sharp spikes. Or, you know, more like some kind of giant cheese grater? Something? Maybe it's more of an intimidation tactic. The, the fact they see a giant spike on there is, is why they're taking so much damage, not so much the actual spike itself. There's a, there's like a slight bit of psychic, magical uh, sort of thing. I, I got nothing. Reminds me a lot of the, uh, the spike tops in Super Mario Brothers, where they are superior to both spinies and buzzy beetles by combining uh, both of their abilities, immunity to fire fireballs and also inability to be jumped on. But uh, for some reason, the evolutionary route went with one gigantic spine rather than a bunch of other spines. And yet they're like, uh, they are clearly the superior type of creature. You know, the sort of thing that I just think about occasionally when it comes to Mario enemies. This is, this is all like a, a totally normal thing that everybody can relate to, right? Y'all have thought about how weird it is that, like, spike tops exist in the same universe as spinies, right? Right? <laughs> like, I'm not the only one here. I... Come on, back me up already. Not, I, I, look, I'm asking this not as just a streamer, but, like, as a friend. <laughs> just... No? Oh, well... I got the 30 kills. I got the, the ability to heal from poisoning. I think I should be doing just fine in this next area. Needless to say, I don't really need a ton of healing right now, but hey, I mean, the few times that you actually get early enough in the game to get this thing to be effective is pretty nice. And there is nothing here that I want at all. 
Hey, I mean, I, I suppose with a a survival run that does not have a main hand weapon, I can now go and take stuff like the bazooki again, which I'm always happy to see. Uh, but yeah, there's there's not really a whole lot to talk about in this run now, is there? Uh, blind faith did really well the last time I was using a, a shield, heavy cooldown stuff often. So sure, <laughs> like. I don't know. I mean, it, one of the few things I could probably do that you would consider to be part of a build would be attempting to get as much out of the, like, uh, shield mutations as I possibly can. But that's really no different from any sort of run where I try and get the most out of survival mutations. It's just, you know, you, you use the shield a lot in survival runs, so why not get something that works well with that. <laughs> it's such a strangely nothing weapon. It's good. Hey, extra damage on shields. Shields do a lot of damage, especially against, like, very powerful enemies. Uh, for example, like, the, the Timekeeper or the Giant, which are uh, very, very parryable attacks, and usually many of them in quick succession, which gives you a lot of opportunity to get a ton of damage from that. It's just... Yeah, there's not too much to talk about. These showcases have been built on trying to, like, really take an in-depth look at each one of the weapons and how they're used and their weird histories and everything like that. But I suppose it's true that when you are making one of these sort of games, that you're not... Ah, I was hoping to keep the flawless going there. That you're not always looking for something weird and wacky every single time. Sometimes it's just obvious things that come to you as you're designing the game. Things like creating the blood sword, and the fire sword, and the ice sword, and the, the electric sword, all that sort of stuff. And similar stuff like, um, oh, this is the, you know, uh, weapon that curses you, and this is the weapon that on every fifth hit does two times damage as a critical. Spacing and timing and everything like that, and I do think that just like, Hey, shields are kind of hard to use as it is, so one that just does extra damage is fine. That's a a completely acceptable style of shield to make without it being overpowered or, like, really weird and difficult to use. Or, or like, just completely impossible to find a reason why you'd use this over a different type of shield. It's just this is Dead Cells. And the inventiveness of each one of the weapons, I think, is is a big part of the game. I don't know. Maybe there is something that uh, Motion Twin could throw in to make it a little bit more unique compared to other shields. What would that be? I have no idea. Giant Spike. Um, hitting an enemy lays caltrips on the ground? You can parry those, by the way. <laughs> I would not suggest it unless you played the game for over a thousand hours, but... Also, more often than not, you will probably just, um... Okay, fine then. You'll probably end up just, uh... Throwing a grenade or something into it instead, but... Still... Still works in a pinch. Get yourself, like, a little bit of extra cooldown reduction or health if you got the right mutations. It is... I'm a little bit worried. Okay. Worked out fine, anyway. It's, a, uh, It's a play that you can do, though. This would also be, much like I did with the uh, failed parry shield run a little while ago, something that you could probably take into a shield only. If you want a uh, double shield or something equally stupid, this would be good for bosses. This would be good for enemies. Uh, it's effective on just about any sort of front, so... that. Ah, See, that's why you don't want to mess around with that too much. But hey, that's, after all, why I do have, like, this, for example. Why not? Why not? Well, I got the opportunity. It's so, like I said, it's so rare to actually see this particular uh, synergy come into play because poison almost entirely disappears by end game. so... Yeah. Uh, soak yourself in that mysterious green liquid that you find in sewers. Feels good. The, the greenness is getting into my health bar, I guess. That's how you would describe that, right? Maybe I'm, like, running on poison right now. 
One of those Twilight style vampires. <laughs> That's how they worked, right? I, I'm gonna admit, I didn't actually read the books, I just read somebody talking about how, hey, they don't have, uh, they don't have, like, vampire blood, they have, like, super venom that takes over, you know, all of the various, like, biles and ickers in their body to perform the same basic function, but also be, like, uh, supernatural in some way. Yes, that does include all bodily liquids, and I know you were going to ask that. That's why I found out about it, because people were like, wait, are you telling? And I think that is true. I don't know, go ask Stephanie Meyer. I'm just making conversation here as I'm trying to figure out what to talk about next with this, uh, with this shield. Okay, okay. Ah, uh, maybe this would also be a time to... I mean, like I said, lot of mutations that I usually eschew for some more useful colorless stuff when it comes to survival runs, but here, why not? This can certainly be fairly effective. Now, come on. This can be, still be fairly effective just by itself, and I would certainly welcome it to the team. Is it much? Uh, it also does still get the same amount of same amount of affixes that you get on any other shield, which means that I can like poison, bleed, light on fire, cover in oil, etc. And it might be worth it to try and get some synergies from that alone. One of the things that I almost never do is try and get synergies by using shields because being reactionary weapons that you usually have to wait for an enemy to attack you first and that's kind of difficult in some cases leads you to you more uh, spending more time just kind of hanging around waiting for an enemy to swing at you when you could have just killed them by swinging your weapon at them being a little bit more proactive. But for bosses, it might be effective for maybe something like... Whoa, what was that? Um, for maybe something like the... I don't know... Uh, wolf Trap, maybe? That does extra damage on damage over time stuff, as I was talking about in that run. So maybe that could be... Something to consider? You know, going and... Uh, attempting to get a little bit of extra damage off of that after I get, like, a fire and poison on enemies, or, like, oil and fire on enemies. I don't know. There's just... Maybe I think it's just... Hey, just enjoy the simplicity of the entire thing. And, ah, ah, I can't climb up the wall because I keep getting hit. Okay, well, now I might actually want to um, hang around for a couple seconds and ye old poison. <laughs> I kind of don't want to uh, for the sake of the video, but it's actually like looking like maybe not a bad idea right now. <laughs> At the same time, too, I, I I was just saying that I will probably be taking stuff like the uh, heals on parry, what doesn't kill me mutation, for example, and that will should cover me for the most part in the rest of this run. I can only hope. Okay, come on now. So many things happening I couldn't even see. Aside from that, there's Corrupted Prison. That's where I'm going to want to make my egress. And there's really not too much of anything else going on, so let's go. And we'll see how it happens in this next area. If I don't get something good enough to take on the Conjunctivius, I will instead go uh, take on the... Uh, we'll go up... Or, or if I just like have to use a Potion Charge or something, I'll go into the, the Ramparts instead. Kind of get that uh, working for me. Which I think will be pretty effective. Do want some high cooldown items if I can get them because the what the the blind faith will be very very good at having like giant's fist or powerful grenade used constantly or interesting 100% on burning oil spreads inflammable oil burns enemies blocked with a parry that's what I was talking about now <laughs> I am cursed make no mistake that's not great but. I do also have freezing, which is nice, too. Good. Anybody else about to be attacking me in about five seconds? Because... Good. Freezing will work out well, but I don't want to wait for my... I don't want to go try to get blind faith working for me. In this context, for the time being. Let's get rid of the curse, and then I'll start working on... Um, Getting myself feeling hale and hearty again, health-wise. Mm-hmm. Uh-oh. Oh! 
You got me. <laughs> okay, switched over to the prison depths because there's no real reason that I should have been in the sewers anyway. Not with a survival build, which is, of course, kind of difficult to work with, even on the best of days, in the in the sewers and especially up against the conjunctivius. So, yeah, let's uh, see how this one goes. And I did get the... I did get the two good skills that I was looking for. Big burst damage, kind of high cooldown, but that's why I got blind faith to back me up. Okay. Good. Hopefully, won't die to curses this time, and I'll be just in general looking a lot better after I get rid of some of this malaise too. Maybe kind of the major issue that I'm looking at right now due to the whole, um, you know, playing kind of recklessly. <laughs> hey, look, Dead Cells is a game about constant, constant combat. You really can't get away from it. As much as I would like to, you know, sometimes take it easy. Just take a nice stroll through the island without needing to worry about being assaulted by zombies every couple of seconds. That's just not how it works. That's why my fanfiction presupposes a world where it's not about violence, not about fighting, but is instead about love. Wherein the main character has to go around kissing every one of the zombies. And I know what you're probably wondering is like, who's going to be the best kisser? Who's going to be the worst kisser? How does the main character kiss without lips? All things that will be answered in my six volume series currently on AO3 under the name Dr. Mr. Fireman. Next six uh, volumes should be coming out soon and that will explore what if every one of the zombies on the island was actually a busty fox girl. I'm, I'm very, very much uh, uh, into that entire idea and I think that it will really change up how people see dead cells. Remember, that's Dr. Mr. Fire Guy. Should be in the next couple weeks. So, it's going okay, but like, man, oh man, am I still worried about this horrendous amount of, good, am I still worried about this horrendous amount of uh, malaise I got? Yeah, it, pretty much what happened was I was actually doing just fine, but then I got, uh, I got shoved into a corner with like five different rats, and I was using a very, very slow weapon, I'm talking the giant killer, which is not super effective at killing them when I didn't really have anything else that did big AOE at the time. And that really does make such a huge difference in survival runs. Any survival runs. I'm talking about, uh, you know, even having like two-handed crossbow style weaponry versus, you know, slow melee. Some of the other weird oddities that you can get like boomerang or hemorrhage. They're all slow enough that they can really benefit from something that will just kill an enemy when you encounter it. Not a fraction of a second after you encounter it. After they might have uh, attacked you like five or six times. Good. Okay. And that's why having this, plus the huge cooldown, is going to work. Ooh, also, perfect. It's already looking significantly better than that last run, aside from the malaise. Of course, if I really was worried about it, I'd just go and take uh, something like Necromancy, which of course gets rid of a lot of that, or Alienation. The Alienation Acceptance combo is still one of the best in the game for healing once you get to high cell modes. If you are ever stuck thinking it, it's just like, boy, I loved this game right up until they said that I couldn't heal anymore. Well, try, try working with that. It's... I'll be real with you, not a great alternative, but it is at least an alternative to healing. Sort of a last ditch effort, I would think, on anything except for like five cell mode, where it becomes, well, four and five cell mode, where it becomes so good that I have to stop myself from just using that combo all the time. Sure, curses are rough, but so is dying from losing all of your health. Death is, death is rough whatever way it comes in. Whatever uh, package the envelope takes, as Omicron would say. I hate that game, by the way. Uh, <laughs> not going to talk about that too much, but it's like, oh. Oh, just the other day I did the rooftop section. If you know anything about that game, it's something. Well, anyway. Hey. I'm giving you at least that cool little bit of extra healing 
just through the parry alone. Something that I'm not like a huge fan of usually due to the fact that, well, you know, the um, it only works on physical parries, not like ranged weaponry, and it only works for like the first hit you get on an, en on an enemy. But it can heal you up a pretty decent amount if you if you uh, are really working on your parry game. And I obviously am, or at the very least should be over the course of this, just kind of as part of the whole like uh, showcase that this is allegedly supposed to be about. But then again, also look at like the, uh, the light speed last time where sure, light speed was definitely used the entire time. And I want to say it was used to good effect during the course of the run, but there was like also maybe other things that made it more interesting as a run to watch that unfolded over the course of that. Don't think anyone would disagree with me. What are we looking at? Uh, you know what? Powerful Grenade, I think, is working a little bit better than me, better for me than the Giant's Whistle. So I'm going to replace that with this. That way, I shouldn't be taking too much malaise at all when it comes to going through these next couple areas. And how about traditional route? We're already looking at a one re at a single restart to maybe make this, uh, you know, not take three hours to complete. Maybe. <laughs> you never want to be too sure about that now, do you? And then let's go all in on the, well, spite or counterattacks. One of the, all, all in on the shield mutations, but I mean reflected. And successful parries. Following attack inflicts plus damage is interesting, but that's not that much. I mean, currently my weapon is doing 4,000 damage if I got the critical, 2,000 without uh, per second. Eh, let's just take spite. Extra damage on range means that range is going to be... Uh, ranged enemies are going to be much easier to take care of. Probably. <laughs> we, we saw what happened last time. We all saw what happened last time. I mean, I'll give him this. It was a good it was a good hit on the part of that Inquisitor. That was uh, one that usually I'm a lot better at dodging around, but that's why those guys are always a big worry when they're around you. Can never quite get out of their tenacious magic bolt grasp. Magic missile grasp, which is annoying. And I'm not even going to try and parry those sort of guys. The slimelings are so fast in how they attack. I mean, they're also incredibly weak, but, you know. The uh, parry timing is somewhat, somewhat tricky. Trickier than your usual enemy. I'll try it at least once, though. Yeah, okay. I mean, you got to predict it more than react to it, unlike a lot of enemies, which give you just enough time. Just that little half second to get you where an enemy tries to attack you is enough to get a parry working. But then, of course, there are quite a few enemies that that is not quite the case with. Oh, invisible. When I'm using melee survival, this one is one that I want to take safe and sorry. Even with the... Ah! Ah, 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 almost hit the back. For some reason, I think more than, like, any other weapon, using, like, War Spear gets me hit by thorny backs a lot. I have no proof for that. I have no reason to even believe it. It's just something... I guess it's because uh, the spear, even back when it was known as the spear, <laughs> the War Spear was a later invention. There's at least a couple updates in. I want to say, like, Darkness update or so before I started calling it that. It is one of the OG survival weapons of the game, predating most of the other survival weapons. Yeah, like, uh, I guess we had, like, Valmont's Whip. I mean, that was even before survival was a thing. It was back when it was just health. <laughs> Extra HP, and everything else was power. Yeah, it's like we had stuff like the... Like, Nutcracker took a couple updates to get in. Symmetrical Lance, yeah. Um... Broadsword was, I think that was early, but I don't think that was like OG. That was pretty early in the game's life cycle, though. War Spear, though, 
was always here. The whip used, I mean, the Valmont's whip just used to be called the whip. So that one was always around here. Yeah, it is. I don't think there is, was a shovel in? Shovel might not have been in. There was not a whole lot of uh, survival powerful weapons back in the day, you understand. That's because everything scaled off the same stat. Why would you want to have them uh, split up there? Builds weren't quite what they used to be. It was just stack everything to power, baby. What more do you need? Turns anything into a powerhouse, especially because it used to be that affixes were very, very rarely able to give you extra stats. And I remember for a lot of the runs back in the day, back in the old season one of this, used to call them like uh, stat pack horses, uh, stack pa stat pack horse items, which are just items that literally existed to give you an extra stat there. Because of the scaling, even a single stat could make such a huge difference in the amount of uh, damage you were healing out or health you had, whatever. I think I saw something on the ground there that I might be interested in. Nope. Uh, I guess I was wrong. A uh, challenge rift. Yeah, that's that that that's what I, I don't know why I'm being coy about it. Like, ooh, they're gonna be so surprised when I tell them exactly what it was. Hmm. Take that instead of tonic, actually. Yeah, yeah. Not gonna be super good. Did the rooting shouldn't should not throw my parry game off too much. But. It might, and that's worrying. Um, giant killer might be something. Eh, maybe I should just save up for a uh, reduction on malaise from the from the the food shop and leave it at that. Something simple, something easy. I'm worried about it anyway, so I think that it's probably a better idea to just work with that than anything else. And, yeah, leave it uh, simple rather than uh, trying to plan for a bunch of other contingencies that may or may not even come up in the run. That never takes off as much malaise as you want to. It's always just like one or two points short. And I wasn't even doing too bad there either. I was actually like, a, I'd say fairly good on malaise compared to how I started. Uh, started the... Uh, when I cut back to, for the video. At least I can only hope that I cut back for the video. If you watched like 10 minutes of me just running through the first two areas in silence. One, it was bound to happen eventually. <laughs> like. I'm, I'm trying to do more video stuff lately and maybe. And hopefully that doesn't mean at the yeah, expense of forgetting to edit things properly. But uh, we'll see. Just throw on Lonely Trout Man over it and nobody will even notice. Ah, oh, my 60 kills. I'm sad. <laughs> or is it Lonely Trout Man 2? I forgot the actual name of that. Throw on Jazz in Paris. Nobody ever talks about Jazz in Paris. That's a good uh, free YouTube track if you're not, if you're not getting uh, what I'm getting at here. <laughs> All right. No, really, just go listen listen to it. Uh, throw it on in the background of the the episode here. It's some real clown music, but you know what? I think that for a lot of content that I create, clown music is appropriate. Think about it. All right, what do we got in the curse chest? I'll take something a little bit uh, unusual, a little bit interesting. I'm talking, of course, about uh, tactics still. But uh, we'll see if that even happens. Any sort of skill that scales with tactics, except for maybe this one. But even then, uh, it's like I was talking more like a, a turret. Maybe a uh, lacerating aura or um, tornado. Tornado works well with survival. Um, nah, it, it's got to go. That's um. Well, you get what you ask for, don't you? Squeaky wheel got the grease. These, none of these phrases are correct. <laughs> anyway. Not even going to mess around with that. A 
I could use the money, not at the expense of my life. Dying to a curse would be pretty bad right now. And I guess I'll just leave it at that. I don't want to subject you to another 20 minutes of me not talking. Would that really be subject? I know there's probably a lot of people that would prefer if I just uploaded... Um... Uh, commentary list videos, but I don't really feel like doing the double dip on that yet. Maybe one day in the future, somebody will be... I'll find out that I actually have like a pretty big contingency of people that would be super interested in that sort of thing. I got my doubts, though. <laughs> uh, roguelites are fun, and if you have some very, very good runs, I think that people would be interested in that. But otherwise, the you kind of got to have that commentary as a value add, right? Otherwise, you would not watch 500 episodes like this that exist on this channel. <laughs> At least that's what I would think. Um, but uh, hey, what's a, what's a video series from me without some sort of existential dread about what people actually want to see out of these things? Anyway, get on with it here, and I suppose, yeah, I don't really have too much choice for a boss now, but um, that's totally fine, because... Concierge is, of course, the easier out of the ones to even be fighting in the first place. No projectiles, though, which is unfortunate, and not quite the same amount of parryable type of things. Should be effective anyway, though. Don't think there was anything I missed in there. I'm now realizing that I didn't, probably should have looked one more time to make sure, but uh, whatever, it's fine. Some real good... If I get, like... I mean, just like reroll this for burn. Yeah. Well, when they die, it, freeze enemies with a parry is also pretty good, and I don't really want to mess around with that anymore. But how about you? One more. Nah. I was hoping for like burn enemies because that's all I would need to get two two different. Well, that is like I I didn't even realize when I picked that up, but that is a really good wolf trap. Just by the way, kind of an amazing setup of uh damage over time synergies that it has going on. I guess that would explain why it was why it took out that uh, that thorny when I used it as a primary source of damage in like seconds. Yeah. Even as just like a little dot there, it's working out quite well. My big hit. Totally with that. Cool, cool, cool. Alright, well, that's some, you know, the, the fun fun twists. <laughs> well, I knew that this was going to happen. Especially with, like, a yeah, spear is kind of weird. Kind of weird stuff happening here. Okay, at least I got the parry there. It's not difficult, but Concierge does have quite a long parry time for its, uh, its attack. Or, uh, ha has quite a long build up to his attack, is what I was trying to say. Alright, and. Yeah, not too much else to be said here, though. Challenge Rift has given me a good advantage. And otherwise, just, hey, good items. Do, do, do. Almost done, anyway. Whatever, I'll take. Well, maybe not that much malaise, but it's fine. Yeah, very, like I was saying, very standard type of survival run going on right now. I suppose I would be interested in maybe taking, like, something a little bit spicy, but unfortunately that's not survival scaling, so not going to be happening there. <laughs> Double damage with this sort of healing would be kind of effective? Maybe? Perhaps just a little bit? And then I guess I'll go up here then. It's been a while since I've done Sanctuary, so... I think I should probably at least give it a try occasionally. And hey, this is actually a, a pretty good area for, like I was saying before, the whole... Um, trying to go after enemies that you can effectively parry. Because stuff like the... Stuff like the golems are actually... Pff, come on now. Stupid freezing. Stuff like the golems are actually uh, quite 
good at it's it's quite good to have a shield when approaching those guys. Okay, come on now. <laughs> Could really use a different uh, main hand weapon though. War spear is fine. It's acceptable. It's not quite what I'm looking for though. What am I getting off of each parry now? Uh, two point one percent. Not bad. Not not amazing. Oh, their parry timing, I'm still not entirely sure about that. Especially because they do stuff like that. Duelists are a strange character, after all. Don't see them a whole lot, and... That's why it's... Maybe, uh, more than anything else, uh, the reason why I have some... Okay, sure. Difficulty dealing with them. Gah! There are so many of them grouped up. Just hit them. Not bad, but not quite the run. Which is unfortunate, because it really wasn't bad. Okay, and then... Yeah. I think otherwise I'm just going to keep going for... Nah, uh, parries if I can. Just because, well, I want to get that extra health back. It's just the enemies need to work with me to make that happen. Can't just have them shooting fireballs all the time. And me not able to get the parry on the enemy that I actually want to get a parry on. Alright, well, I guess I'm going up there anyway. Fine, fine. It's not quite the same as necromancy, but at least it can get me up past half health. Which may be worth its weight in gold just by itself. What doesn't kill me, like I said, has its downsides. But with the necromancy nerf that came about, I guess not even all that recently anymore, but still in recent memory... It's, um, it's more tempting to take. It's also going to eventually be some sort sort of... Uh, some form of cursed chest around here too, which I am worried about. Excellent. And now with both of them kind of grouped up at once, easy. Also good stuff too. All right, I guess I should just go for parries with these guys anyway. So much for spite, really uh, taking care of ranged enemies. Well, that's kind of what I was hoping to see them, see that be used for. Mm-hmm. Come on. Okay, you think it would at least apply the freezing gimmick on there? Chew, but it does not. Good? Better? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. I'm happy to see still uh, a couple different necklaces that are giving me some sort of uh, benefit here to use. I guess I'm just going backwards. Still on the lookout for that cursed chest. I'm probably going to be abusing the bomb to get as much use out of that as possible. But aside from that... Um or to get rid of that as fast as possible. Not to get as much use out of that as possible. That's like not even remotely close to the correct combination of words that I wanted to say there. <laughs> well, anyway. Yeah, let's see how this happens. Of course, you never really know. Speaking of which, ooh, that's what I was looking for. That's some spicy damage. All right. Okay, now come on. Oh, you're killing me here. Good. I don't want to go for the parries on those guys, but I think I got the timing down. Yeah? Hmm. Oh, perfect timing there, you. I hate it. I hate how, how that worked. And yeah, somebody asking me in one of the previous comments, like, hey, what's up with not going for, like, the... Uh, the protectors when you see them and it's just like oh having invincible enemies teleport to you the protectors shields go down for just half a second every once in a while well, every couple seconds and then if you get like an entire group of uh deadly um just say elites or just even like uh powerful enemies like a bunch of the yeah this is a good combo yeah 
uh, the duel is certainly here. I think are a good example of that. Rampages, for example, too. If you get like a bunch of those guys teleporting right next to you, and then their shield comes back up, it's like, oh, it's not worth it. And especially early game when you see like protectors in the the uh, part of the the promenade. It's like that's when you probably can't just burst them down in less than one second. And I'm sure you saw with like the powerful grenade up until I got it upgraded in the last fight that it was not quite able to one shot like basic enemies. Close, but close will get you killed, Dead Cells. <laughs> that will get the runners on you, and they are all invincible, and they will kill you. <laughs> it's a it's a calculated play, even though if I don't run through the area fast enough, I will probably die. It's certainly, I'm not going to say the calculations work out in my favor each time, but I think that compared to try and like wait around while like a toxic miasma is next to you, just so you can try and take out the protector, not a good idea. <laughs> Still one of those things that I never really thought about too much until somebody asked about it, because, you know, I just think that it's like, well, I want to leave <laughs> and... I, I want to leave away from enemies that I know will cause me harm, but why? <laughs> For what reason? Why prioritize one thing over another? Not bad. I'll take it. Not going to be a big burst, though. Maybe I should have kept the... Uh, yeah, I probably should have kept the um, everything else while I was at least going to be taking down the, the Kois. Hmm. Oh. I was hoping for a, uh, yeah, I was hoping for a, uh, untainted version of that. Oh, boy. Okay. Got them taken down easy. Got you taken down easy, and now... Got a good nutcracker cracker combination, at least. Very similar to that last run that I was... Oh, come on now! at least like one that actually did not get quite get killed now they did okay oh come on you got to be kidding me thank you <laughs> like I, I guess it was dropping dropping one of them down on top of the this is also not bad either but I'm not gonna take it <laughs> Dropping um, an enemy down on top of the golem that must have done it, because how else? How else? It's like, I'll say this, you know, as always, shields as good as they are, I do not think I would use them while being cursed. Just too risky. Even if I'm fairly certain of my ability to, to hit stuff. God. Stupid. Slow down doing me in there yep okay close 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 and anything else that I want to take here ice armor is sort of tempting I don't really think there's anything else to uh, to go for right now no no it's looking like sepulcher or, or clock tower uh, how about the clock tower Again, in the, if I'm going to be taking the traditional route for the first half, take the uh, unusual route for the second half. And maybe like distillery or castle. I don't know. Both of those I don't go to equally because I tend to take the, uh, the giant route. Because it's convenient for me. And I got the giant down enough that I can... I, it's not like too much more damage that I'm going to be taking on uh, this route as opposed to the other. Nah. And also, this is a this is a decent little um, build for this. Shield is going to be good, and of course, Nutcracker plus uh, freezing on the shield plus the okay, Nutcracker plus freezing on shield plus a wolf trap. <laughs> I can't believe I died there. I tried to get the parry, and then it's like I that actually wow. What an embarrassing death. Dying against a regular enemy when I wasn't poisoned, when I wasn't uh, at very low health already, and just, it wasn't even like an elite. It was just a regular enemy. <laughs> it was, that's, uh, that's pretty bad. Well, I'm back. 
and I have a... I'll be honest, this is way more of a, a tactics type of run than survival, but you know what? I've already died twice here, so I'm just going to take uh, any advantage I can get. Not worry too much about if I have, say, banned items or anything like that. Besides, with like the introduction of stuff like the Weird Warriors, I don't know if this is quite as powerful as an item. Certainly a welcome addition to any uh, survival build regardless. The other thing, of course, though, is that I couldn't really get any very good synergies. Rooted targets is nice, because I am still using a... Mm, sure. Because I am still using a wolf trap, but that's not something that I can really consistently use on everything. Better against bosses, and that's usually what I, uh, I hope to really see the most out of. And additionally, the barnacle, not like the highest tier of... Uh, tactics, you know, the turrety type of item, so I would say that despite the looks, it's not really as powerful as you might think. It's good, certainly, and gives me a lot of range, gives me a lot of potential at killing enemies uh, without needing to get too near by them, but that is kind of antithetical to the whole uh, attempting to do a shield-based run type of thing. Okay, now come on. <laughs> Well, whatever. This is where the shield is going to come in, of course, because I do want to have parries all about as just a part of the whole taking the what doesn't kill me mutation. Okay, well, that works too. I was wondering if I was going to whiff that, uh, that um, parry and then have to pay the price in terms of... Okay. That was a surprisingly long time to show up there, I'm just saying. I kind of want to go for the parries, but it's also like I know if I get hit, I'm going to be in a bad position. Maybe what I should do is just take the potion charge and deal with it like that. Well, I am currently getting like almost 3% every single time I do get a parry. It's just there are a lot of ranged enemies in this area, both bombardiers and inquisitors, which makes that a little bit difficult to do. And I am definitely not going to try to and go for parries against the automatons because they are... Ones that I never try to parry, so I don't really know the timing on them too well. All right, all right. I guess I'm just going to have to see how this works, because I am... T I did take a bit more health, just to be certain that I wasn't going to die because of that uh, unfortunate circumstance like last time. There we are. But that does mean no food stuffs back in me up here. Oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> Just care. Okay. And okay. Yeah, like 2% isn't uh, it's a decent amount healed after all. Oh, come on now. <laughs> Using the shield as a, a defensive option in terms of healing is not really something I've attempted too much in the past. Definitely a different type of playstyle, but one that is not too tremendously different. This is just mostly what it would look like if I was trying to go for far more parries in any individual run. Like a shield, like largely shield focused type of gameplay. As opposed to, you know, only doing it when it's kind of convenient to me. Because it is a reactionary weapon. You gotta wait for enemies to attack you and all that and that's not like... <laughs> That got me killed last time. If you didn't understand the uh, hearty chuckle that I was giving there. <laughs> Whatever. At least I can get back all the rest of my health easily enough. It's just... Oh, gonna have to save up for the potion charge later on, as always. Excellent. Not as excellent. Modestly less excellent. <laughs> the excellent meter is down but not to an unrecoverable state. Oh boy, tentacle. I guess it's not that bad, but still, it is tentacle. We are talking about tentacle here. On the best days, not really the most impressive of uh, things. What would I even want? I mean, the burning inflammable oil on this mushroom boy could be good, but knocking enemies back also does kind of work against the whole shield aspect of this build. 
I mean, I guess I could go look for an upgrade for the, the wolf trap, but with the whole 75% rooted targets. Why is my mouse here? Was that here the entire time? Huh. Note to self, uh, change OBS so that doesn't appear anymore. But thankfully, it seems to go away unless I have a, I have it paused. Hmm. I always want to kind of make sure that you see that. Otherwise, if you're playing I Want to Be the Boshi, uh, it will come and kill you. The, the mouse cursor. It's a, it is a fun quirk in that game that that happens. To be honest, I do find it kind of fun, but it's like I also know that a lot of people that have actually played that game a pretty extensive amount find it very irritating. <laughs> ah, whatever. Look, don't record your cursor. It's a good practice. And I'm not even that good at this whole YouTube thing. <laughs> I just noticed that there, because usually it's like, even if I have it turned off, I generally um, will keep the cursor off the screen just in case. From, I still remember the, uh, the what was it? Crow's Wing episode that had, uh, what was it, a C in the corner the entire time? People were just like, I thought it was a bit. And it's like, ah, that's a weird bit. Then again, it's like, damn, this is really a prison of my own making. <laughs> I decided to. Cultivate an audience that would expect me to just put a C up in the corner of a video for the entire thing. I don't regret it. <laughs> if anything, I am proud that that is the sort of expectation that is put on myself. If I'm incompetent, then I can just play it off as a joke. Anyway, yeah, anytime I die in I died in this episode, it was a joke. Didn't you find it funny? I thought it was pretty funny. Blood sword, all right, but don't care. Just for the health, you know. Cannibals, maybe not something that you want to be baiting out for uh, parry health-related games, but I'm doing it anyway. Because that's the sort of incredible skill that I bring to the table vis-a-vis -vis Dead Cells. 25 is really not as much as I'd like. Oh, I had some good runs going too, but it's just nothing, nothing quite on the order of having 30 by the time I get to the next boss, which is really what you want to see when it comes to the, the magic missile. It is not a gimmick based weapon that has very high base damage. It is something that scales off of stats real well and good synergies. And that's why I was kind of hoping to re-roll into something that wasn't just rooted targets, but like oil and fire, poison, both, maybe? Because <laughs> those are easy enough to get with, uh, with the setup that I have right now. I mean, as you can see, Barnacle just by itself is giving me a lot of fun things related to fire. Uh, fire and rooted would be good, but that's, that's not what happened. Oh, well. Can't always get what you want and all that. This, however, like I said, very good for using shields. Maybe not the major melee attack, but all of the range attacks are just excellent for getting the most out of parries. And you can still do regular parries against the, the broadsword hits. It's just, you know. And there we are. Looking good for now. Kind of waiting for her to go with the uh, the shuriken. There we are. Because that's where I'm going to get the big damage. Come on, can I do this one perfect? Because I think that would be fitting for the... The shield here. It's like, this is the sort of one that... I would expect perfection with. Oh, don't accidentally go right into the thing. Yeesh. Come on. That's fine. Going immediately into... Come on, I'm waiting for her to use the shuriken, because that's the one thing that I really want to go for here. Oh. Oh. There we are. Not bad, though. Oh, come on. That was... Oh, that's, that's too bad. Something, like, stalled it out for just one second. Otherwise, I would have gotten that parry there easy. And she didn't reuse the shuriken. Five in a row is a lot of extra damage when you get that that 
That big parry using this weapon. Oh, that's too bad. So close. But needless to say, it's like, yeah, it's so many very obvious, very easy, easily parryable attacks. Same thing with the giant. He's got a lot of projectiles in there, and of course the punches are just ripe for the, uh, the parrying. It's a, it's a, it's a good thing to have for these second tier bosses. You're gonna take anything away from this run. And I also think a good thing to have for basically any boss. Yeah. It's not too easy to get like conjunctivious parries or anything. Yeah, 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 sure. It's not too easy to get conjunctivious parries, but it is something that you definitely can do. <laughs> It, there's that big telegraph dash. If you got the timing for that down, that will put her right in front of you and give you some good opportunities at a lot of damage. Same thing with the Mama Tick. And not so much with giving you opportunities for damage, but just for dealing damage. Those Scythe Claws are kind of a bit more difficult to deal with, though, comparatively. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if only I had, like, the 30+, plus, this would be some amazing damage on the Magic Missile. But for right now, it's just kind of, ah, it's fine. Enough to take out enemies, certainly. And I can still uh, utilize the old tactic of kind of jumping around to get hang time. Will prevent a lot of enemies from attacking, but... Ah, you, you need the stats, you need the synergies to make this really a blowout weapon. It's not like a Hokuto's Bow Alchemic Carbine, which even at low stats, it actually works very well. Oh, that one's always a little bit, uh, that. <laughs> I don't know, I didn't think that it was going to be all that, um, I didn't think it was going to, I thought I had a little bit more time. Then, uh, sure, for right now. Really also a good weapon for taking on the, the Hand of the King. Small arena, easy to bounce off of walls. Not gonna do too much with it. I'll take it for right now. After all, if I'm saying that the uh, the general magic missile, as much as I like it, is not amazing yet, I'm gonna at least have to go through this area first. It's like a damn it. <laughs> this will be a good alternative. Yeah, yeah. Just use the potion. Should be doing that though, if I can. Now, really, if that didn't end up hitting anything, I was going to be very disappointed. Also, I'm sure you can probably tell that, yes, I am forgetting that this is supposed to be a, uh, a shield showcase right now. <laughs> wow, they all jumped up me at once, and then I, um... Oh, my God, come on. <laughs> this is so ridiculous, because it's like... Them all jumping at me at once is preventing me from being able to hit them with the whole critical that I'm trying to do. There. Jeez. It's like forcing me upwards onto platforms rather than uh, right next to the wall where I want to stay. Okay, man. Somewhat rough sort of uh, run today. I guess it doesn't work on this. Hmm. Interesting. And hey, Wings of the Crow. Also very, very good synergy with the... Even if I'm just using survival right now, because it keeps you above the hand of the king, and, you know, the barrel launcher is quite good for that. Alright, I was going to sell that, but I guess, uh, right, I kind of need it for stuff if I don't time things well, and if I kill that one barrel launcher, or whatever it's called, infected worker, right at the end of this area. Alright, anyway. <laughs> Man! Ah, it's too bad. Still really like this weapon, but... Did not manifest in the way that I was hoping it would. Spike shield, on the other hand, is fine. I mean, that's not really too much more to be said about that. What with the whole, like, yes, it's a good weapon. Said that from the beginning, it's just not a very interesting weapon. There is no fault that says that it is because of... You know issues with the actual item itself, it's just kind of uninteresting. And it is ultimately a shield, which is 
you know, difficult to use as anything but a secondary weapon in a lot of ways. Anything of interest? Poison, Toxic Cloud. Nah. I think that what I got right now is just fine. Try to get through the end area without having to go grab the barrel launcher again, but if I do, that's fine too. Yeah, come on. Give me that parry or that extra health. This is at least like malaise reduction, I guess. Not super important, but hey, it's there. This is kind of like, as of right now, being like the healing shield. At least it was right up until I got hit twice by that guy again. Ah, uh, it's something that can function, but like, I don't know. With the fact that you actually do have to get parries every single time, it doesn't seem like a great idea in general. Now, I definitely don't really want to be using another, another potion charge right now, if I possibly can. It's just much like the... Much like the clock, or not the clock tower, but the other area. No, yeah, the clock tower is what I was thinking of. Lot of ranged enemies in here, aren't there? And that uh, does not work super well for this. And what I can try doing is maybe parrying the infected worker a little bit. Might not be a bad idea, but also might get me very hurt. Oh man, am I going to want to just take a... Uh, yeah, I guess so. I don't really see any way around this right now. Should have taken um, Necromancy at this rate. Alright, just leave. Just leave. I don't want to deal with the, the barrel guy. Rat, come on. There. These things are very bad at attacking you, it seems. Oh my god. Ah. I don't even know where half of these enemies are coming from at this point. Good. And... Good. That's enough. It's enough to keep me in the game for a little bit longer. Unfortunately, the bats here are not really making this too easy. Good. No, I don't get healing from that. Of course not. But I want to check anyway. Good. Anything else before I'm leaving right now while I'm waiting for that thing to die to uh, damage over time? No. Anything else of interest here? To be honest, I think I am probably going to be looking at taking a different type of weapon now. Oh, I guess, you know, upgrade for the shield. Sure. Still using the base level one because there's a lot of items that can be spawned in those shops. I still have a lot of the items on to be spawned in those shops, so I wasn't really able to find anything else up until this point. Now it's doing double extra damage, which is fine by me. Mm-hmm. And okay. All right, all right. Come on now. Yeah, I think I got to take a magic missile off of the band list here because it is uh, it is clearly not, you know, quite up, up to snuff anymore now, is it? I don't know if there was, there was some sort of change that happened or if it was just I have every time I happen to be using it, I also happen to be getting a lot of stats. I mean, I think it's maybe also with the whole like change up in how stats work that... Yeah, I uh, you know, you can't just get like a million stats from the sepulcher anymore. There. Which was sort of the thing that I was using last time. I was well, any any previous time that I was playing the game to really work for me. All right? Okay, and okay. Jeez. All right. Once again, very little opportunity for... Yeah. 
Very little opportunity for being able to parry stuff. Ah, okay. That'll work. Am I getting anything very interesting out of the shield, by the way? Uh, bleeding, which I guess is okay, but I don't know. I don't know if it's all that useful. Oh, come on. Oh, come on, this is... Ugh, that's absurd. The box was hitting that enemy in a really weird way that was... That, that, that box was just right on the edge of hit, being able to hit the uh, the um, barrels into me, which is... Okay, now come on. Which is a bit... Um, tricky. Alright, do need to do that. Also, you do really get a lot more stats from the... It seems like you really do get a lot more stats from the, um... The... Castle, don't you? Especially without that extra key, it does seem like it... I feel like I'm not getting nearly as much. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And anything? I mean, not really, but I guess I'll take it anyway, because why not? Good. Many, many, many enemies coming in here. Got them anyway. And then that should be good there, and I really do want that extra bit of statage that I'm good to get from power scroll up here. Also still have yet to get the uh, the key, right? Or was that the key that I just used? I can't even remember right now. Too focused on everything else. <laughs> Alright, 28. Not great, but alright. And then... There we are. Well, not perfect, but hey, it works. I'll take it. Definitely no 60 kills here, but uh, I think that I should at least be able to get into the next area pretty easily. It's not quite as good as some of the previous uh, previous sections when it comes to having a shield, you know, like shield usage, but it still should be very effective once I, you know, get up to the boss and get into the next area. All right, what do we got? Okay. And basically what I'm going to be going for is... Two, three. Much better timing than I was doing previously. <laughs> Into the spikes, then. Okay. Get a couple extra parries there, too. Jeez, I hope I do not have to use my last potion charge in this fight. And I think I'm going to have to, unfortunately. Yeah, screw it. Let's do it right now. Get it out of the way. Okay. Missed that last one. Doesn't really matter, though. There's that at least, like, two-thirds of the way to the next, uh, to the end here. Should be looking okay. Good. Also, apparently that healed me, so I guess new phase, or I just took long enough that I can actually get... Uh, uh, uh. It was not uh, leaning down to hit the targets. Magic missile. Okay, come on now. Oh. 
Well, whatever. That's that done, at least. Oh, I feel like I should just end the run right here after everything that I've uh, <laughs> kind of done for this one so far. What a weird mess. Especially after, like, I felt like this one was at least the start of a good run, but didn't quite uh, didn't quite coalesce into that in the way that I wanted it to. And then uh, by the end here, it's just kind of like, eh, no potion charges, halfway down on health, but, like, yeah. <laughs> ah, well. Weirdly train wrecky type of run, in spite of my efforts. All right, well, let's see how this goes at least, because I still think that if I can get to the end, I probably, like, I really want to keep Magic Missile because I like Magic Missile a lot, and I've used it quite a bit and talked it up a lot. But it's also like, man, I could probably use something different right now and get a lot more effective uh, usage out of that. Oh, well. Let's see what else is going on while I'm here, though. Because you never really know what you're going to find and all that. Maybe some decent... What I'd like to see is like some decent uh, necklaces, if possible. Of course, as always, I'll definitely see if that even happens to happen. Good. Can I at least get rid of the... Yes, librarian before problems arise. Oh, yeah, that works. Sure, that's okay. Not quite what I'm looking for, but not the worst either. And everything else is going just fine. All right, I will take that potion charge as soon as possible, though. No reason not to, really. Because I do need healing in one form or another right now. Not right now, right now, but soon. Is that another elite? Oh, yeah, so it is. That's what I was trying to do. For, you know, no real reason. It's not like I needed to get a really easy kill on that enemy, but I... Come on. But I was, uh... But I did it anyway. Okay, come on now. Uh, I should see what's in that chest already. It's something that could possibly be used. Because I don't really know. It's like, uh, as much as... Yeah, as much as I like the run, it's just... <laughs> Subpar items all around, and that's a problem. Should go see what's in the other shop and if I can even possibly afford any of that. But I don't know, it's a. Uh, it's a little bit questionable. Go get like extended healing, rethink my the life decisions that I made trying to make that jump there, but um, <laughs> it worked out, didn't it? Come on. Anything else that would be good? I guess maybe like shovel. Shovel's always a pretty good uh, get. As well as just in general, Nutcracker, as always, works pretty well with this sort of build. Might look into grabbing that if I can, but it's probably going to require a lot more elites and a lot more necklaces to be selling, after all. Oh well. Um. Yeah. Okay. Getting followed everywhere, but it's just fine. Here, can I get. Yes, and a uh, physical attack, which then got uh, totally blocked by the. Okay, come on. Physical attack, which then got totally blocked by the, um... Okay, okay, come on, for real, though. This is ridiculous. I don't really want to use a potion charge right now, but it's kind of looking like I might have to... Okay. Or maybe this is going to end the run. Yeah? Okay. Certainly it got close. 10%. You know, I think that at this rate, I don't even want to use a potion charge. I'm just going to see if I can't play through this anyway, because uh, if I have to use that here, then I might as well call it a loss anyway. So maybe I can at least uh, heal back up with what doesn't kill me and kind of hope that that uh, covers me for the most part. If not, though, this could be an interesting... An interesting win if I uh, manage to fight through this anyway. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. There's that, at least. Now at 2%. It's not looking great, but... Also, I still have not found the, the last key. God, I don't know how I am able to go down so many different routes and never find these keys, it feels like. It's always so difficult for some reason. Okay. There's that, at least. I'm getting 3% now. Yeah, that's looking good, at least. And the Magistrate is not really doing too much about that. Okay. <laughs> really? Well, oh, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. Well, that was interesting. 